Uh, so, uh, thank you for the introduction. And good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ni. Uh, I will present our work. This is the new private set intersection protocol uh, from our SPARS OT extensions. And this work with uh, Benny and Avishai from Bay Island University and Mike from Oregon State University. So, maybe you attended uh, another PSI talk uh, a few days ago. And I know what is uh, PSI, uh, but uh, I also want to go through a simple scenario of PSI. So here we have two parties, Alice and Bob. Each has a set of items. And now they want to compute the intersection of their set on the way that they don't want to leave any information except for the intersections. So uh, PSI has many applications. And my favorite one is private contact discoveries. Uh, in this scenario, you, you have, uh, uh, we have Alice uh, with the phone and a list of her friends. Uh, on the other side, uh, we have Bob, uh, who is a Skype server provider. Uh, and he has a list of users. And now Alice wants to find out uh, which of her friends use Skype so that she can chat with them. Uh, obviously, uh, we, we want to compute the intersection of their database without revealing anything. Uh, so there are many and many PSI applications, like DNA settings, uh, online advertising, or bot botnet detections. So before going into our protocol, uh, I would like to uh, discuss about communication complexity uh, of PSI from general assumptions. He one-way function and OT hybrid. So the naive solution, uh, you, you need to compare every item of X to every item of Y. So clearly the complexity is N square. And uh, later several works, you hash scene scheme to map the item into bin, and now compute PSI bin by bin, it reduces the cost to n log n. Uh, a few years ago, uh, with Google hashing, the communication cost is upper linear, uh, little omega n, it's still not linear. Uh, and this works is the first linear communication PSI protocol uh, from the general assumptions. I mean, one-way function and OT hybrid. And the work of four novel and Ostrov keys is the concurrent work. So, uh, this, so I, will, I will discuss about the comparison in more detail later. But for now, here is the outline of my talk. Uh, because our protocol is based on oblivious transfers, so I will present its functionality and how we use it uh, for, uh, how we use it for PSI. And then I will present our sparse OT PSI constructions and its experimental numbers. So for simplicity, uh, I want to present, I want to uh, present the random OT, uh, where Alice input is just one bit and, uh, and he, she received the OT value, which corresponds to her choice. On the other side, uh, we have Bob. He received two OT values from the protocol. And the important thing is that if Bob doesn't know uh, Alice, Bob doesn't know Alice's choice, and Alice doesn't know another OT that Bob has, so this is the functionality of uh, random OT. And now uh, I want to show you how we use it for, uh, for PSI, but it's not a, co a correct protocol that we want to use. So, so this one is for the PSI uh, with a small domain. And the basic idea is that uh, the party will run as many OT instances at the size of the domain. So it means that here we have a domain A, so we have eight uh, random OTs. 
And for example, if uh, Alice had number one, number three, and number eight, and indeed her input to the OT depend on her set. So what does that mean? So look at first uh, random OT. You can see that Alice had number one. So her input to this first OT is a big one. And she received the M11 corresponding to her choice. On the other side, uh, Bob received two uh, random values OT. So now for the second OT, because number two isn't in her set, so her choice, her choice bit to the second OT is zero, and she got uh, M20. The same thing for number three, uh, with uh, the choice bit is one, so on and so far. So now, um, if Bob has number two, number three, and number four, so Bob only look at the blue values, uh, M21, M31, and M41. And the next step is Bob will permute the, the value and then send this value to Alice. So Alice also only look at her a red value, right? And now does the comparisons. And you can see that M31 show up in two sets. So number three is the intersections. So, uh, so this is the, uh, the just example for PSI using a random OT. But they have two problems. Uh, actually, it's OT needs a communication. And the second one, is you need to use the OT for every item in the domain. And this one is impractical for the big domain. So how to handle these problems? Uh, so I will go to our, uh, uh, I will tell you our solutions using our sparse OT. Uh, but before that, I want to uh, like tell you about OT extensions, which is uh, first proposed by Beavers already two decades ago. So the OT, uh, OT is very expensive if using public keys. But now you can have a small number of public keys OT and then extend it to get many OTs as you want using symmetric keys. So that one is very efficient in terms of computations. But you still need to, uh, to pay 138 bit per each uh, OT. And I also want to go a little bit more detail about how OT extension works. So first, party run a small number of base random OT, and this one you public key. And each party gets some random output that they use as a seed. And the next step, uh, the party will locally extend their seed to many values uh, through PRG. And the length of the total length of the expansions is the total number of OT instances that they want. So now looking at the OT instance I, Alice somehow can compute her OT output. However, to have Bob output his uh, OT values, Alice has to send the OT correction values, which is the, the value PI here, uh, which looks random to Bob. So having PI, Bob now can compute MI0 and MI1. So this is how OT tensions work. And now, for example, if Alice has number three, number seven, and number I, uh, she only care about the the red value here, number three and number seven and number I, right? Uh, similarly, if Bob has number five, number seven and I, she only cares, he only cares about the blue values. 
So if you use the current OT extensions, uh, you have to send all the PI values for every item, every item I in the domain. And this is expensive, so we want to avoid it. Uh, so we have two questions right now. The first question is uh, how to send PI without revealing I. And the second question is uh, we indeed uh, generate many OTs, uh, many number of OTs, uh, but you, we only care some of them. Uh, so we have a new idea to avoid the sending the hue metric. Uh, so Alice puts all of her PI, PI values into the polynomial. So for example, this polynomial goes uh, to rules the point 3 and P3, where 3 is the in her set. Similarly, uh, 7 and P7, and I and PI. And now uh, Ali sends the polynomial to Bob. Yeah. So it's easy to see that uh, if Alice has n items, this polynomial has uh, n coefficients. So it means that sending the polynomial is equivalent to sending n values. So now having the polynomial, uh, Bob uh, interpolate that one uh, at the point P to get P, P, P5, at the point 7 to get the P7, the OT correction value, and I and PI. And the main observation is that if both parties had the same items, for example, number seven, right? So uh, both will get the, the, correct, uh, correct, the correct correction OT values that Alice has. Uh, so with P5, Bob can compute M, uh, his OT values, uh, M51 and M, uh, of M50 and M51. Uh, with P7, he compute uh, M, uh, M71 and the same thing for MI. And now, uh, on the other side, uh, Alice, Alice can compute M31, M71 and MI1. Uh, so the party compare the OT values in the clear, and you can see that uh, both parties have M71 uh, and MY1. So it means they are in the intersections. So, so we are done with the first questions uh, using polynomial. And now we are going to the second questions. So the recall that a both party have to use PRG to stand their seed to many values. However, we only care uh, some of them. So very simple uh, solution is we replace uh, PRG uh, with the PIF. And we have uh, several tricks to compute this uh, PIF efficiently. Uh, but you can see the paper how to do it. So we are done with the, our protocol. Uh, for the security, the view of Bob is the polynomial over the correction OT values. And Alice, you her inputs to interpolate this polynomial. You can see S1, S2, and S3 here. However, because all the P, Px is random, so this, this polynomial looks random to Bob, therefore it hides. Uh, the Alex input set. Um, for the view of Bob, oh, oh, sorry, so for the view of Alex, if the, uh, the item Y isn't in her set, so Alex never interpolate over this point. You can see Y and PY, the collection OT uh, value PY here, but the point he interpolate is something like here. So we show that if, if the capital P and small p is far in the meaning of Hamming distance, so the size of the few size should be around 3.5 uh, security parameters. 
And now the matrix, uh, the OT matrix M Y1 looks random to Alex. So the proof is a bit uh, complicated. So just uh, see the paper for, for more details. Um, and the bottleneck of our construction is the polynomial operations. The reason is, you can see, it has the hue degree and the field size is very big. So similar to previous works, uh, we use hash to bin scheme uh, to map the items into the bins. So we have many small degrees polynomials and one per bin, so it's very efficient to interpolation. However, we need to pad the dummy item to hide the actual bin size. So this one increase the communication cost. Uh, so we use uh, a specific new hashing scheme so that uh, the number of dummy items is only 2% of the set size. Okay, so for the comparisons, uh, so our protocol is we have uh, so we have two protocol variants. Uh, the first one have the big polynomial, and the and the second one is the small polynomial with the hashing scheme. So for the first one, we send the big polynomial, which is equivalent that to sending n value. So here we have. Uh, n value to send, and n value to receive. So the communication cost is about 500 bits uh, per item. For the second variant, uh, because we use the hashing scheme, so they have 2% in number of dummy items. And we use two hash functions. So we, need, we, we have 1.0n sent and 2n received. And the communication cost is about 600 bits uh, per item. Uh, compared to OT-based PSI, their protocol somehow you need to use uh, about 1.5N of private membership. And in which 50% uh, is the dummy items. And they need to use three hash functions. So it means they need 1.5N send and 3N receive. Uh, their communication cost is about 500 or about 1,100 per uh, items, which is two times uh, more than our protocol. So for the human based uh, PSI, they need N send and two N receive. Uh, you can see the protocol fingers. And their communication cost is about 576 bits per items, which is still more than our protocol. And we are the uh, best, our protocol has the best communication cost. Uh, so in summary, uh, compared to delphi hellman based PSI, our protocol is uh, two to uh, 20 times less, uh, 10 to 20 times less communications. And we have two to, uh, two to seven times faster in the term of running time. Compared to OT-based uh, PSI, uh, our protocol is 4, 4 to 4 to, uh, 4, 40 to 50 time, uh, percent less communications, six times lower in land setting, but two times faster in one setting. But our protocol is the cheapest in the, min, in the measurement of computation and communication costs. And we use Amazon Web Service uh, price for this one. And we have we the our protocol is the first linear communication protocol uh, in OT hybrid and one-way half functions, and the work of four Noble and Ostrovsky is the concurrent work. Uh, so if we put our two variants in the computation and communi communication graph, uh, one variant is here with the loud communications. And another variant with the fast uh, in terms of running time. And compared to uh, our previous work, our protocol is uh, cheapest one 
So it, for the land setting, we are in this zone. And for the warm setting, we are in the dark zone. Yeah. So for the uh, future work, uh, you can see that the bottleneck of our protocol is the polynomial operation terms. So any alternative solution for that one? And this talk is for semi-honest setting. So can we have a linear communication PSI, but for Melissa setting? And the last question uh, pointed out by a reviewer that uh, can we view our SPA OT as the multi-query OPF? Yeah, it's done with my talk. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Example, if you want to uh, further compute on the intersection, is it easy to uh, to generalize? Yeah. So right now we send right now we send all the OT value in the clear. So this one allow the receiver check whether the, the so it means that one review the intersections, right? So I don't know. I mean. Maybe you have the, another way to send the polynomial so the party can check uh, the intersection, intersection in some circuit or whatever. So the party will learn the share of the bit, uh, whether they are, they are in the intersection or not. Yeah, thank you. And any other questions? Okay, let's uh, thank the speaker again. Yeah, thank you.